No, I don't waste no time. Yo, yo, guys, welcome to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, and I'm here today with Shivam, who, uh, funny enough, we just discussed on his channel how we both got started. Um, and fun fact, I was Shivam's first coach, quote unquote, and Shivam was actually my very first student. So it's it's great to see how things have now come full circle because now we're actually working together um, with with the outreach, which obviously we'll get into in just a short moment. But Shivam, for those that do not know who you are and what you do, would you mind giving a brief introduction of yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, Joshua, it's a pleasure to be on the channel. And yeah, for those who don't know, my name is Shivam and I'm based out in India. So not a US, UK based agency owner. You're... So yeah, we basically I run an agency called One Line Labs, wherein we help with lead prospecting and personalized first line services. So people are doing like, you know, B2B campaigns for the cold email, Instagram outreach, anything. So rather than hiring a VA, they can hire us and give us, you know, what kind of leads they need. And we basically source for them so they don't have to spend on software, training, etc. And we also offer personalized first line. So uh, no AI based, everybody's a writer on our team and basically provide first line. So that's the main business that we're running right now. And I have a social media management agency on the side as well that runs on automation. So that's basically where I'm at. I started YouTube as well. So I was glad that Joshua could have me on the channel. Yeah, man. I love that. I love that new service because a lot of people, they will start an agency. And then there's the certain things that an agency obviously needs. You know, one is obviously prospects to reach out to. And on the other hand, obviously, you know, you need to get those client results. So it's yeah. it's it's such a smart move to actually tap into that need and then offer yeah. a service around it, which is obviously, you know, is is uh, is the outreach. So that's cool. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? So it's been over a year now since One Line Lab started. So we originally actually started with just personalized first line. So <laughs> it was actually a mentorship where I was where I was learning cold email. And who's now my business partner as well, Michael Gardner. And we basically started off together and he actually taught me how to write first lines. And I just wanted to make an extra buck. So I started doing it for his students back then. And I just, you know, I've always been a person who doesn't like to do stuff on his own. Like once I learn something, I like to outsource it or train somebody else to do the exact same thing. So I just basically trained somebody locally to write first lines. And I was just chilling, making some profit. And I just realized that everybody needs this because, you know, a lot of people don't actually have the perfect English to write a personalized first line or don't understand how to structure them. So I basically started offering this as a service. And that's why the agency name was One Line Labs because it was supposed to do with the personalized first line. So yeah, that's where yeah. the one line came in. And later on, I realized that, you know, I need something else as well to complement the service. And I just thought, what do people need before first lines? And that's leads. So mm -hmm. I just started to add in leads as well. And when I started off leads, they were like pretty bad. And then I was like, you know, I remember one night I was like almost in tears that why did I like, you know, introduce leads as well when I was doing perfectly well with first lines, but slowly the process got much better. And today we are doing first lines as well as leads. And it's been crazy. The kind of feedback I've gotten for the agency and the kind of repeat customers really shows me that, you know, uh, it's like, basically I'm not digging myself for gold, but I'm selling shovels. It's, it's the perfect analogy. To I love business. that, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a cool analogy. I like that. And one thing that one thing I like about the whole story as well is that every time there's a challenge or you see an opportunity, you know, you you pivot or you jump into that opportunity, which is yeah. um, obviously, you know, like we said before, before we started recording, um, you've had like quite a quite a, a journey full of, you know, where you've altered your offer, you've 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 switched up sort of the niche or you know the the service that you're offering. And that obviously yeah. takes a lot of determination and obviously you know you're now uh reaping the rewards of that um uh, but how how difficult do you think it is when starting out to sort of really get the ball rolling with uh offering online services or just the smma business model yeah it's it's been crazy like you know i started out in 2018 when social media was still practically pretty new so mm -hmm. you just had your one or two people who were selling courses who were teaching what to do because they were the early ones to the business and uh you know when once i started off it it seemed all like good but once you start outreach and like you know i think back then you know they always say start yesterday 
I think that's the thing with social media as well, you know, with the marketing agency, the space has been really weird the past few years, you know, how, how everything has switched to more about coaching coaches, coaching coaches kind of a thing versus, yeah. you know, back yeah. to where it was. And I feel it's, it's, it's now holds a certain pressure because you see so many people jumping in and just closing plans for whatever time. And it's more of a one night success kind of a thing is showcased by, we both know that, you know, we've been in the agency for so long that, that's not the case, but the pressure gets on to people who are starting off and they start off with the mindset of earning like 10K, 20K per month as soon as it begin. While we both, when we began, I think I was making like $500 a month, like, and I was happy in $500 a month. Like, you know, for me, that was a big deal because that was the first income I got online. My yeah. first page was $10, you know, and nowadays if I say tell anybody it was $10, they're like, I don't do below $1,500, you know? So mm -hmm. people don't realize the journey that you have to go through. It's just that, seeing stripe board screenshots etc just become the norm nowadays yeah. i feel people have to get out of that space to actually run a successful agency you have to put in the outreach numbers like i always tell on my channel as well put in the outreach number that's how you get meetings and then meetings lead into sales if you don't if you want sales do outreach you know people want to take an easy path out there but there's no easy path unfortunately to running an agency i think you would agree agree with that to run 100%. yeah 100 yeah sometimes um, like we don't get an extraordinary amount of calls booked. Um, yeah. because obviously the reason why is because we qualify uh, our clients a lot or our, our, our leads and prospects before they can even book a call. Um, yeah. But, you know, we will have sometimes, we will have some days where there's like five or six calls in the calendar. And then when I show people that or I tell people that, they're like, oh, how, how did you get that many calls booked? How is that possible? I'm like, if only you knew the back end that we've set up to actually get those six calls booked, you know, it's not, it just, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's not just like, oh, we turned on the calendar and people randomly booked calls, you know, and yeah. my conversion, obviously, you know, now that we wait together on the outreach, you know, you'll know my numbers, but when I was doing it myself, my conversion rate was like 0.5%, something like that. Uh, to get a call booked, you know, because yeah. we sent out that many emails and only a very, very small percentage, you know, 99.95% yeah. of uh, emails will get deleted, unread, marked as spam, et cetera. And only a very small percentage of people would actually book a call. Um, it yeah. does take a lot of work. And one piece of advice I'd give everyone that is, you know, starting out or is on social media and see all these success stories is, look at what their angle is you know what are they trying to sell like why are they showing you those results what are they trying to sell you um yeah. the question i actually got this morning from an existing client who we run facebook ads for was um why are we not doing tiktok ads you know why are we not um offering that as a service or should that particular client also start running TikTok ads for, for his offer and yeah the reason why he asked that was because he was seeing a lot of people offering TikTok ads as a service and getting good results with TikTok ads. And my response was, why are they showing you those results? You know, the people that are saying TikTok ads work as well are usually yeah. the people that want you to buy their program on TikTok ads or program on how to start a TikTok ad service or a TikTok ads agency. Um, yeah. And the same goes for Instagram and Facebook, right? That if you see the results of people getting a lot of success with SMA, et cetera, it is possible. It is, you know, it's not, I'm not telling you that social media is not uh, a viable business model anymore, but yeah. just know that it takes a lot of hard work and determination to get, um, you know, to where you want to be. And obviously, you know, you and I both are prime examples of that because we both had our struggles. We both, um, you know, took to taken quite a long time to get to where we are now. And, um, you know, it's only for our, both our determination that we've actually hit that point where we are now. Because um, a lot of people would have probably quit in the process. Yeah, exactly. And I also feel that, you know, with the 997 course kind of a thing going on, yeah. you know, I, I sell leads and lines, right? And that's that's basically, you know, what you need to actually close clients. But when I tell people, okay, like people say, yeah, I want to buy 100 leads. Okay. I say, for example, it's $45. They're like, but I can't spend $45. Like you're actually spending that money to actually close a client worth $1,500. But People exactly. put in the last ounce in these courses because they promise them to, but then they don't realize that actually that is, even if it's a small cost of running an agency, when you're starting out, there is a cost involved. And like, you know, you have to get through the bumps into actually doing that. I feel, you know, gurus, et cetera, teaching nowadays that it's a zero cost business. It is relatively lower than Shopify or, you know, mm -hmm. running any other kind of a business online. But I feel 
uh, there is some sort of cost associated with it that a lot of people don't understand at the moment. Do you do you agree with like you know you've been running uh, yeah. LG with that? Do you agree that there's a certain stigma attached to it that it's a zero dollar startup business? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like it's it can be you know it can be passive, it can be zero dollar, but if you want it to be successful, if you want to actually run it in the long term, then you will need to treat it as an actual business, right? Um, so you know. I could I could run this as a passive agency now, but I'm assuming that in three months' time, none of my clients would still be with me and my pipeline will be empty and everyone would have basically have left. So yes, in those three months, it will be passive because I wouldn't actively do anything on the business. But at the end of the three months, there will be no business to actually you know attend to. Um, yeah. So if you want to run it successfully, then yes, you will need to put in the work. But in my opinion, that's not a bad thing, right? Like we're all entrepreneurs to build something you know sustainable and profitable and to set ourselves up for you know later endeavors and you know late later entrepreneurial adventures um if you treat the agency business model right it's a cash cow like it's such an easy way of making recurring revenue that you can then put into different aspects your different um the different businesses etc but you will need to obviously treat it right and the funny that like, you just mentioned that like people will not be willing to put in $45 either because they don't have it or that they don't see the fact that uh, out of those leads that you generate them, you know, yeah. they could be making thousands and thousands of dollars because it's obviously recurring revenue and, you know, one client can already equal 1500 Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's like, there's no other business model out there that is, that has a, a barrier to entry that is that low as social media yeah. marketing. But yeah, of course, if you want it to be, like you can either try and find those emails manually in this case, you know, for the example, or you can spend $45 and get, you know, a hundred completely qualified leads of business owners of, you know, six and seven figure businesses that are willing to give you a couple of thousand a month to run their ads. You know, it's a small yeah. price to pay when, when you compare it to what it could actually bring up. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like, like, you know, offers as well plays a huge role in today's times. Like we discussed, like, you know, 2018, the offer could easily be I run lead gen ads for Facebook mm-hmm. or I do like, you know, I, I help your DTC brand go to six figures, you know. Now with competition being so much, I feel offer matters so much more than anything else does, more than your copy, more. You can have everything perfect, but if you have like a basic cookie cutter offer, I, I feel that it's not going to work because every Shopify owner, every real estate agent has seen that particular pitch. You yeah, have to offer something exactly. a bit unique and a bit like, you know, out of the box to actually run a successful agency at this time. And that's just the harsh truth of it. Like, you know, I, I feel like that's like with you guys, you offer so many guarantees in place. You work with a very particular niche. You work with a very particular client and you say no to all the other clients with us as well. We mm-hmm. work with certain people who we know, okay, these kind of leads would work and they have a proper system in place to actually run cold email. But like, you know, I see people just offering the same cookie cutter thing when they buy leads from me and then they say, your leads didn't work. It's not the leads. It's not the copy. It's actually exactly. the offer is, it has to be something that actually, you know, adds value to the business owner because as people just saying, yeah, get on a 15 minute call with me. And I just ask them, why would I like, imagine you being in their shoes and mm-hmm. you're totally unknown to them. Why would they give you 15 minutes of their time when they're running, say, a $50,000 plus a month business? They would rather not do that until you provide them some value. People have lost the value of like, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk used to say left, 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 right hook, basically value, value, yeah, value. Yeah. They do that versus I think people are now like, yeah, get on a call with me. And then they say, yeah, people are not responding back to me because they have no reason to. So, you know, it's yeah, crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's funny because like sometimes I will get the occasional DM where people say, well, um, you'll like, because bear in mind, I've been on YouTube for like over five years now. Uh, probably even longer if you include all the fitness content. Um, and then at the start, this is like 2018, I said, yeah. when you're starting out, try and get as many clients in as possible. And then once you know what works for yourself, you what clients you actually enjoy working with, then you start to niche down. Bear in mind, this is four years ago. So yeah. what worked back then won't necessarily work today. And if you were to ask me right now, I'd probably say, no, go specific, pick a niche. If you get clients... On, in your pipeline that aren't within that niche, then by all means, take them on. But yeah. the way you brand yourself and bring out your offer 
I think needs to be more specific than ever because everyone is now saying they help brands scale to yeah. six and seven figures with Facebook ads. So if yeah. you send out an email and a potential client reads that, they're not going to be interested because they have no idea what separates you from the 20, 30, 50, you know, other agencies that are trying to reach out to them as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, by, you know, 2018, you could, you could do that. You could say that and you'd be the first one to do so, or you'd be one of the few. Nowadays, yeah. everyone is doing that. Everyone is directly copying and pasting scripts that they get from courses. They're using the same yeah. subject lines that they see these gurus do. You need to find what works for you. You need to pick a niche what works for you, pick an offer that works for you, and then run with that. And you'll notice that it's a blue ocean. Not everyone is trying to compete for the same type of clients. And it'll be much yeah. easier to increase your retainers and also get the result because everything is tailored towards that one niche. Exactly. And, and you know, you've been running a personal brand yourself, so I'm pretty sure you see your occasional cold email and you started your own e-commerce brand as well. I'm pretty sure you saw a lot of emails come in for that brand as well. And you must yeah, have 100%, seen, man. I received a cold email back, like, I think two days ago where the English was totally broken and the, and the guy just said, choose from my packages and he just had his packages down there. And, <laughs> and you know, I was just like, why would I? Like, you know, you provide no value to me. There's no yeah, personalized man. I think and there was just packages. I'm pretty sure you saw that for your e-commerce brand as well, did you? Yeah, it's funny because so that whole e so for those that don't know, we uh last year we ran hoodies that basically said uh, more life on the front end, which is also the the slogan that we use, and then unemployable on the back end, which basically means you know you're you're not once you get that awareness of what's possible in like the online world, you will never become employed again because you you've 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 seen you've seen the matrix, right? You know what's possible. Um, yeah. but it just, it basically, it was just a, a joke within the community of my coaching yeah. group. People said, you yeah. know, we need a hoodie. So I brought out the hoodie. Um, and then well, once they, once they sold, I sort of, you know, stopped promoting it. The, the shop of my yeah. store is still available. If you guys want to go and look at it, I think there's still a few hoodies in stock, but it's not, I don't promote <laughs> it anyway, but still I get at least five to 10 emails a week from people that want to do my SEO, people that want to do the fulfillment, people that can offer me cheaper rates on hoodies and, and, and apparel and so on and so forth. And they, will send, they won't even send it to my email. They'll send it to like my Shopify inbox. So then I'll get yeah. like a message on Shopify and then I'll read it. And yeah, like people don't even put in the time and effort to actually look into the business. They'll just send out a blast, hoping for the best, um, which is obviously why a service like what you're now offering is so good. Because, yeah. you know, it's it's not just scraping emails and sending them out. It's actually looking into, okay, can we help this business? Is this business a right fit for the agency? Yes. Okay, well, then we'll move forward. If not, we're not going to provide that email address. Exactly. And, and you know, I think we both also connected, like, back in 2018 when I didn't know about all of this. When I sent you a DM, I didn't send you, like, you know, the cookie cutter. Hey, Joshua, help me make money or something no, like true, that. No, true, man, true. Yeah. I said, I watched your YouTube video. It was really inspiring. I just started out. Can you help me with this, this, this? I'm ready to connect and network with you. And that's why you responded back to me because it was a well-structured, personalized message. Back then, when you just started off YouTube, I think you had like 200 subscribers when I messaged you for the first mm -hmm. time. You know, it's 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 not about just brands, but it's about personal connections, networking, etc. how you send out your message because that's the first touch point to getting to know somebody and that first touch point made us two thousands in business together exchange from your, you to me and me to you like you know it's i yeah. think at this point it must be like even at how much money we've given each other but you know just that network connection of actually knowing each other for the past four years and you know everything of that so just start off with that one message so if i had actually screwed up that first message and just sent you something random you may have never responded back to me and we never would have been on this call so it's crazy how one message really can get you into like you know a long lasting relationship versus how one message can't. So yeah, I think that's what people estimate. You know, yeah. just because a lot of um a lot of like business owners and entrepreneurs that I still speak to to this day that I know from like the online world, it all starts with a cold DM either to me or me to them. And yeah, yeah it's it's only those that actually are personalized and not in a oh, I need to reach out to this guy, so I'll try a personalized first line, but a genuine message, it's only those that actually trickle through and uh, yeah. will actually you know, get a response or get a reply. And um, you know, obviously the reason why we're on a call right now is you know, because of that DM. The reason why we had a call with Michael a few weeks back is because it was a genuine message back and forth you know, of mutual respect to one another. 
and then realizing, okay, you know, we can actually, you know, do some business together. And there's many more examples like that. Um, so yeah, the cookie cutter, the the, co- the copy and paste stuff, it it doesn't work anymore because people are bombarded with so many messages. They just yeah. they don't even read, they don't even recognize the who sends it. It's just like this filter, and it's yeah. only the genuine messages that that sort of actually trickle through. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's crazy how you know it's such a simple thing to discuss. Whenever we're discussing it, it may sound stupid to a lot of people who are listening to this that you know who doesn't send out a genuine message, but it's unfortunately true at least in the social media marketing realm of you know yeah how you'd be are. surprised man how many like random messages that get sent out yeah. yeah but anyway uh before we wrap up just obviously because i know you are tailored uh, towards outreach you know we're working together now on the outreach as well um do you have any tips for those that are starting out with their agency that um basically you need, need help with, with outreach yeah so First of all, I would say when you're starting out, have numbers in your mind. I see a lot of people saying, I reached out to 100 brands and I got nothing in return, so they quit. Mm-hmm. I feel outreach is a hundred, is a numbers game. Yeah, Pick out two yeah. outbound prospecting channels. It can be email and Instagram. It can be Twitter and Instagram. It can be, it doesn't have to be cold email. Cold email works very well if mm-hmm. you know what you're doing. So, and don't just copy paste templates off of the internet. Just write a normal genuine message. And it, it doesn't have to be like, you know, I see a lot of people saying, but my script is not good. A script can just be a basic about, you know, hey, name, your personalized first time. Uh, you know, I really love that, you know, you do this. Are you facing this particular issue? If you are, I'm happy to record your personalized loom video on how I took a similar brand like yours from this to this to solving this problem. There you go. That's your script because you highlight their problem. You highlight something about them. You're personalized about it. You're offering a free value. And while offering a free value you're giving them some kind of a case study to let them know that you're not new to the agency world and yeah. that's what people would say yeah shoot me over a personalized video and if you provide enough value on a personalized video that goes through a meeting and that goes through a close so exactly it can be as simple as that but people like you know over complicated and i get a lot of students as well who say but you know i can't send out 50 dms a day so don't send out 50 dms a day start with 20 go to 30 then to 40 then to 50 exactly and if you don't start it you you won't get anywhere and it, the best feeling is when you send somebody a DM, you send somebody a cold email and they report back to you and say, yeah, I'm interested. That first reply feeling you'll never get back again. So don't get lost in those numbers, but actually focus on that there are people behind that account. And once you realize that people behind that account, your outreach numbers would just change and your outreach message would change significantly. When you don't treat them as a number, as a $1,500 client, but as a particular business that you can help provide value to and create a win-win scenario for that, they pay you 1500 so you can pay your employees, you can run your business, and you, in return, get them 10000 so they can run their business while working with you on a long-term basis. If you get this simple line into your head, I, I 100% say most agency owners would succeed if they have this kind of mindset while doing outreach. Yeah, 100%, man. That's crazy value, man, at the end of the video. That's uh, that's good stuff, man. And just, just like, for those watching now, like, that's how simple it can be, guys. Like, you know, it doesn't need, it's not rocket science, but, you know, you just need to put in a bit of effort and just do what everyone else is not willing to do. So while everyone's doing all the, cut, the cookie cutter stuff, that one pay size line or that one genuine email or message can yeah. make, you know, a world of difference. But yeah, yeah, man, that was good stuff. For those that what basically want your service doing yeah. all of this, what's the best way to reach you? So you can go to my website, onelinelabs.com for package deals in case you're looking for just leads. Other than that, if you're looking for something very specific, you can reach out to me on Facebook. I'm most active there and Instagram as well. Either or, you can just send me a DM. Said you come from, came from Joshua. We'll give you a little nice hey. discount as well and <laughs> we'll get you guys started. Awesome, man. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll link all the, the links in the description box down below. But yeah, for now, we'll, we'll probably wrap up this call here. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.